We're capturing it before we get started. Yep, yep. So far, so good. No one's in the lobby. All right, so we will go ahead and get started. Um, my name is Jessica Thomas, and I'm the Division Administrator for the School Review and Fiscal Accountability Division. Um, and I am excited to have you guys this morning. So we want to thank you uh, for taking the time out uh, to join us. Um, just some quick updates that I figured we would just bring up. Um, we do have our financial reimbursement program. Um, you know, for those of you that are participating this year, uh, just remember the invoices are due July 31st. Um, we are encouraging those early submissions. Um, just of note, the funds are dispersed or will be dis dispersed according to availability. So if you have any questions, issues or concerns, um, don't hesitate to reach out to one of our team members or you can send an email to the OSIFRA um, email account. I believe there was a couple of notifications that went out earlier um, or late last week, uh, just reminding everyone of those submissions. Um, another update, uh, we did have our um, budget assumptions process, uh, you know, statutorily uh, that was due in early July. Um, we have begun the process of analyzing that data. Uh, so thank you to everyone that submitted that information uh, in a timely manner. Uh, lastly, we do have our budget analysis that um, will begin uh, pretty quickly. Um, as you all are aware, the annual budgets were due, and this is a time of the year that the department assesses um, how the current fiscal health close, um, how you close out at the end of the year. So we are excited to see um, how things ended uh, for many of the districts. And we also quite excited to see how districts are planning to expend funds in the future uh, or the next fiscal year. Um, right now, early reports are showing signs of progress with our district. Um, we anticipate actually several of our districts will be resolving uh, their deficit status. Uh, so kudos to those of you uh, that anticipate you will no longer have a deficit. Um, one of the things procedurally that we do, um, while we do recognize that these budgets are showing, um, you know, a positive fund balance, um, the process is one at which the department will confirm those budget assumptions um, through your independent financial statement audit report. Um, as you are aware, that report is due November 1st. Um, however, if your district would like to move quickly um, with the department review, uh, we are encouraging early submissions of that audit report. Um, so if you are, if your board is approving that audit, uh, prior to that November 1st time frame uh, that we typically work with, you know, regards to the FID, um, we would need evidence um, that the report is in fact the final one, uh, including the board resolution, uh, you know, that approves that final audit report. Uh, but if you would like to get that information to us in advance, uh, you know, we do welcome that. Um, it'll allow us an opportunity to start looking at that data. So we can start looking at those districts that are exiting our oversight and get that process underway. And if you have additional questions on that, uh, feel free to reach out um, via email. All right, so we will now um, jump into those of you that may be familiar with us and those of you who are fairly new to working with the department. Um, so the School Review and Fiscal Accountability Division, um, we're responsible for working with all of Michigan school districts. Um, so this includes ISDs, PSAs, um, LEAs as well, to identify potential fiscal stress as defined by statute. Um, the division was created through the implementation of Public Acts 109 through 113 of 2015. And um, we are a team that literally spends all of our time, you know, analyzing uh, this fiscal health for all districts. Um, some of the key functions that we do, um, obviously, is the early warning identification. Uh, so those are districts that are showing sometimes signs of potential fiscal stress through the trend analysis. Uh, we also are responsible for reporting and monitoring of the fiscal health. So those of you that are submitting, you know, monthly, we monitor that just to make sure things aren't uh, are moving in a positive direction. 
Um, also, we do offer technical and financial assistance. Um, this is a core of what we would like to see and the engagement that we will have with our districts. Um, so one of the things is as you identify projects that you think will aid you in improving your financial status and it aligns with your strategic plan, um, please do reach out um, if you have um, areas that you need additional support. Um, we obviously do our annual program with all of our districts, but if you do identify some that will, you know, you're running into some obstacles and you think this would add a lot of value, we encourage you to reach out. And then we also have our engagement and outreach. Um, one of the things that you'll start seeing more is we'll be doing more webinars. We'll be finding different ways to educate um, our um, districts under our oversight in a variety of ways. Um, sometimes it may be in collaboration with MDE, maybe in collaboration with CEPI, uh, but overall our goal is to make sure that you're getting the necessary information uh, specific to um, our division and also what uh, things that we found that would be helpful for our districts that are currently under oversight. And as um, Sam has here uh, with regard to our agenda here, um, we're going to go over our legislation, our financial status reporting, which brings us here today, and we're going to cover both the monthly financial status report template or the revised template, including uh, what is expected as it relates to the administrative review. We'll also go over our top 10 errors. Uh, these errors are ones that we've seen quite frequently um, in our reporting, and then we'll go over questions and then we'll have a closing uh, remark. Sam, you can skip down to slide number five. So as I talked a little bit about um, our, our key functions, I thought it would be very important just to help everyone understand exactly what we're looking for when we're assessing fiscal health. Um, obviously, we look at your board approved budgets uh, and I put in there board approved. Um, that's a key uh, piece of this is that we are interested in our board approved budgets. Uh, so that we can uh, make sure that we're working with, um, you know, the final. We recognize that budgets change. We recognize that they are updated, uh, but we definitely want to start with those board approved budgets as it's the foundation. Um, also, we look at the financial statement audit reports. Um, I want to highlight the importance of the financial statement audit reports. I know that historically we have worked quite a bit with analyzing budgets. Um, but one thing I can say is that we are shifting our focus slightly to look at some of the trends as it relates to the audit reports as well. We're looking at net position. We're looking at all those things, um, you know, your debt schedules. All of those items um, we are putting a little more emphasis on as we assess the fiscal health of our districts. Obviously, we're looking at our EDEPs, DEPs, uh, the corrective action plans that have been submitted. Um, information that's submitted into the FID, also information from CEPI and also the state aid reports. Um, I would encourage everyone, if you are you know, working with us and you're doing a corrective action plan, those corrective action plans actually aid in our decision-making process. The purpose of the corrective action plan is to allow you all to have, um, you know, if we were to see certain trends in your district, and we're trying to determine if potential fiscal stress exists, that corrective action plan is actually what we utilize so that we um, can know like, hey, you, might, you guys may have noticed a drop in enrollment, but you know, we expect you know, X, Y, Z based off of this program, and you know, we're not certain that you know, your analysis has captured this. Those corrective action plans is an opportunity for you to provide that response. We do encourage everyone to take those corrective action plans seriously. But overall, many of the documents that we just uh, highlighted here are the ones that we monitor on a regular basis. Um, we also will work with other reports that we may have from some of our peers over at MDE. Next slide. So when we say we are analyzing, we do have fiscal health indicators that we believe are very important as we assess your health. Uh, so pupil membership, uh, you know, we talk about this quite a bit. I know that um, everyone's aware of this, but this is one that we monitor closely. 
Um, so this is one that you'll see us analyzing at length. We'll probably be asking more information about this on a regular basis, probably more than the of the other um, items here. Staffing is one that we have focused on. However, I think with a lot of the changes as it relates to ESSER and expending of funds um, moving forward, I think the staffing is going to be another area at which we will be asking for updates on. Then we have our net change in general fund balance. I think that speaks for itself. And then we also have our ending general fund balance, um, grant management, and also debt service. I want to focus a little bit of time right here on grant management. Um, I would say in the current fiscal year and probably the next two to three fiscal years, the grant management piece will be a key indicator for us as we assess your fiscal health. Um, as you are aware, uh, the budget implications of COVID-19 um, relief funds through ESSER had a material impact on your district's financial position. Uh, many of your assumptions, your budget assumptions, um, are reliant upon expending those funds in a timely manner and also in the grant period that's there. So as a result, we will be monitoring your ability to draw down those funds in a timely fashion, and we will be developing a monthly reporting tool that aligns with reports that you are already uh, you know, reporting out to MDE. We're actually working in collaboration with MDE so that we can make this as seamless as possible. But um, I, I think you all understand um, that. Um, if you identify areas, uh, whether it's internal controls or things that you're noticing within your district that you believe um, you need support on, whether that's establishing processes, getting external support to help you all with grant management, um, please do reach out. We do recognize that grant management is going to be an important piece of the process moving forward, um, especially with the complications as it relates to ESSER. Um, of note, and I think this may be important for those of you that have title funds, um, be very mindful of how you are allocating um, your funds for your budgets for those of you between titles and also your ESSER. Uh, you know, we recognize that maintenance of effort is applicable um, for title uh, and that maintenance of effort is a little bit different as it relates to ESSER. So just be mindful of that. That's one thing that, you know, we've been trying to encourage, uh, but we will continue to work with you all as it relates to grant management. But again, if you are running into problems, please do reach out. Um, we are working to identify support so that we can assist you all in that area. All right, next slide. We're going to now go into an overview of the legislation. Um, and I'm going to hand this over to Sam Ear, who's the manager for the division. Okay, thank you, Jessica. So, yep, I am Sam Ear, the manager of the School Review and Fiscal Accountability Division. So, Jessica kind of gave the overview of kind of what we do and what we're looking for, and the legislation is really kind of the why we do it. So, uh, Public Act 436, most of you are probably familiar with. That's the emergency manager law. So that's when there's a financial emergency uh, that really there's a lot of problems where the state comes in and can place an emergency manager or a variety of other options related to that. Um, and Public Acts 109 through 113 of 2015 is, is what the legislation that was implemented to try to avoid Public Act 436. So it's much more of a proactive approach uh, how do we identify schools earlier when the problems are small um, before they before they take those next steps and become bigger problems? So uh, most of the, the reasons that we're here today are related to um, this Public Acts 109 through Public Acts 113. Um, Public Acts 109 is the early warning side. So that's our pre-deficit schools, um, schools that our models identified as trending down. So uh, potential fiscal stress is defined as a we, our models project a deficit to occur within the current or following two fiscal years um, based on the historical trends or any budgets or the audited financial data that we've seen in the past few years. Um, and there's a few reporting options um, with that. There's basically two options of an administrative review through the ISD, any ISD or your authorizer as well as the option of periodic monthly reporting through the Department of Treasury. So we will talk about both of those uh, coming up with most of the focus being on the monthly reports to the Department of Treasury. Um, Public Acts 110 
111, 112, 113 relate to deficit school districts. So those are the schools that their fund balance is already in the negative um, and it could escalate to an enhanced deficit, elimin deficit elimination plan with the Department of Treasury. Um, so that's on this next slide as well. So 111, 112, 113 are the, the progression that could lead back to Public Act 436 uh, and the emergency managers if the situation never gets better. Um, but our goals with the legislation is that proactive approach to avoid uh, the next steps and really get those trends turning around. Um, so now we'll be getting into some of the monthly financial status uh, templates, uh, going through kind of what the options look like for districts who have potential fiscal stress in the early warning side, as well as the EDEP side. So our reporting templates are very similar, um, but the EDEPs have a little bit more, as you'd imagine. Um, so this slide kind of goes over what the tabs we have are. So both tabs uh, on either worksheet, whether it's early warning or EDEP, will have the similar similar tabs uh, on each document, but the EDEP has a few more tabs related to the deficit elimination plans and a little bit of a narrative behind the scenes there. Um, so I can pull up the actual templates. We'll we'll pull up the EDEP tab uh, as as we just discussed. The tabs or the reporting is exactly the same, except these tabs have been added to the EDEPs tabs. So the tabs that we have are instructions. So it's kind of it kind of gives a quick go to guide on what you need to do and kind of when you need to do it for the other tabs going forward. So we do have our due dates, uh, when things need to be updated and what data really needs to be input in each category. Um, really quick high level, we'll run through the tabs. Uh, we look for district's contact information. So what the district's contact information is, the superintendents, the business managers, and the board president. So we do send communication to all three quite often. Um, for schools with a deficit elimination plan, this is the actual plan that we like to get board approved uh, each year. It's basically a long-term budget forecast and the, the prior year difference. So what the change is year to year to year. Uh, and it does go out for as many near years as you need it. So you'll fill out as many years as you'll need until that ending fund balance will remain positive. Um, our narrative tab will be the a section for you to kind of give this, the story behind the numbers. So what assumptions or what other explanations there'll be for each year and kind of what the district strategy is to eliminate those deficits. Uh, and then really quickly, we'll go through kind of what our this is will be our main EDEP uh, e status or monthly status um, for the early warning schools. And it has a similar budget analysis approach as well as our budget actuals and year to date percentages as well as any variance columns. So and the next tab we'll look at is cash flow projections and actuals. So we'll have a cash flow projections each month. Uh, we'll update our cash flows two times per year, one here in July and then one in December, kind of halfway through um, to build those projections. And then alongside of our projections tab, we have our actuals. So this one will update each month with the actuals for the month and the variance column will compare our projections over to the actual tab. So that is kind of where we're at for the high level, kind of what our tabs look like. Um, and budget analysis. So the main thing that we're looking for is we are always trying to compare the original budgets, the amended budgets, the final budgets, um, as well as kind of where we're at each month. So we're really tracking the expenditures, um, where the expenditures are timing and as well as the revenues uh, and any vari variances compared to the budget to where we're at for each point of the year. Uh, Jessica, do you have any? Pull, yeah, if you could, you just pull open the um, early warning uh, report for this. Uh, so we'll be able to go over each one of those. And in essence, <clears throat> what I mentioned before is it's easier for us, obviously, to uh, um, monitor what's happening as it relates to your budget to actual. And one of the things that I would say is different with the new template is, is that we are interested in knowing your most recent budget. So we have three columns here. Uh, you have your original budget, you have your amended budget, and then also the final budget. So as those things are adopted by your board, um, you know, it is our expectation that these individual columns will be updated. 
And the way uh, the template is structured is that it will pull from the actual column that is the most recent adopted budget. And I want to be very clear when I say uh, the board approved budget, because that's an important piece of this, because it's the one that which will be on your website. This will be what is interfacing with the public. Um, so those documents are very important to us throughout this process. As you are familiar, this is a traditional approach uh, related to the chart of accounts. And um, if you see here, Sam has even added some of the codes that you may utilize for those different sections. One of the differences that we have done this year is that if we go all the way over, we're literally just taking every month. So every month, the role is, is that you're just going to input your actual numbers for each one of these columns. And then there will be a calculation that will occur for your year to date and also the percent encumbered. Um, I know most districts do these types of reports for their boards every month. Uh, so this should be a pretty seamless process. The other item to note here is that it's very important for you to explain any variances because what our team is going to do is they'll be looking at these variances and they might ask the question, well, why was there a jump from, you know, 15% to 20%? You know, there was an increase in revenue or there was a hit to your um, basic programming. These are the types of questions that we will be looking at. Now, we aren't in a position where we're going to say, OK, we'll be asking for a percent, th a threshold, for lack of better words. Uh, but if you do note that there are material changes to your operations or anything of that matter, it would be helpful if that information is described in the columns I there for the variances. Of note, if this information is updated accordingly, Sam always talks about the carrot. Uh, the carrot is, is that the monthly calls, uh, that information is there. Uh, so this will be the source of, of the conversations that we'll be having with you on the month-to-month -month basis. Uh, but this is the foundation of that. Now, this looks a little different in the sense, again, that we're going out for the full year. So you'll be tabbing over, um, you know, every month to add the actual um, numbers that you had um, according to the budget. Right, and that change was really made from kind of some of the feedback and some of the 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 from other districts. So some districts, because in our previous template, it was one month, and they would submit a different tab for each month. And basically, we tried to work with the districts and how can we make it easier for you and easier for us in our analysis. And we developed this template to go across with every single month for the entire fiscal year on the same tab, so we can kind of track side by side by side and really see the month to month to month. So that was one of the other big changes. Um, anyone that's done the reporting in the past on this call today, this like the format on this one is exactly the same, except we tweaked the other financing sources this year. So instead of having it in the revenues and expenditures column, we've pulled out the other financing to the bottom, similar to a lot of how the audits present this information, uh, to have that other financing sources uh, to include the incoming transfers and outgoing transfers and those other uses down at the bottom. So. Everything else will be similar uh, if you were in this reporting process before for the monthly status tabs, except for the other financing sources. And we've added a few more calculations at the bottom uh, to provide some more information as well. So those are the main changes uh, for the monthly reports between our previous fiscal year 2021 and our 2022 tabs. But we're really hoping that this will be easier for everyone um, with each month uh, in the actual the month summary as well as a calculated year to date. So the July year to date should just pull in July. Um, our August will pull in the, the July plus August, all using calculations instead of the district having to manually calculate anything themselves, hopefully. So. Uh, and I would have one other item if we go back down to those inner fund transfers. Um, you know, one of the things that I would say is important to us, much of our analysis, and you look at the legislation, is focused on the general fund. Um, so when we talk about those incoming and outgoing transfers, it's very important for us to find out and or note any material um, transfers that are coming from the general fund or to the general fund. Um, you know, I know that sometimes, uh, you know, there are those transfers on a regular basis, um, but the point is, is so that we're making sure that we're monitoring and understanding what the general fund balance is. And we actually um, did put both uh, the general fund balance as a percent of revenue and also as a percent of expenditures. 
we do recognize that there are a variety of approaches uh, at which some um, may calculate that. So we have just added both of them, and I believe that's a calculation at which it will automatically occur. Um, and yep, so and one other change, it's a slight change. So in the past, we've had a very, very locked down template, so it's all been password protected. You can only type in the certain cells. Um, we're not going to do that this time. Um, please do not make any changes to the template uh, without any sort of approval. Um, we don't want you to remove anything for sure, but a lot of districts like to add assumptions and they'll use this information for their board reports. So they'll use our templates for the board reports, but they want to add some information to it. Um, please let us know if you do want to add anything and we can work with you on any of the assumptions at the bottom. Uh, as a lot of our districts, especially our EDEP districts, have added a lot more of their assumptions and drivers of the EDEP uh, to the bottom of our templates. So, so there are no passwords this year, um, so it should be a little easier to, to manipulate if we were to add anything thing um, so that part should be helpful for for both as well but we will be checking if everything should be there so please do not remove anything from the templates um then back on um, yep so now we'll switch gears into the cash flow a little bit kind of going through uh, so the cash flow will be a little different compared to the previous year's template so we did add a few different categories and really broke out uh, quite a few more categories to track uh, the different revenues um, for fiscal years 21 22 um, a lot of them are similar but we've cleaned up the names a little bit as well as added any isd revenues any of the san revenues the tan revenues uh, and really trying to track some of those those grants and bonds going forward this year as really the grants are going to be a large part of the finances going forward in the next couple of years here yeah, and of note, um, with regard to both the SANS and the TANS, we recognize that not every district, um, you know, utilizes those um, options. However, um, it is our intent. If you are utilizing them, it makes it a little bit easier for us. Uh, we are involved, obviously, in that borrowing process at which you must have an approved EDEP if you are applying for funds. Um, so we want to make sure we're monitoring um, that as well. We do recognize um, as it relates to um, you know, bond proceeds, we see that sometimes that has a material impact on your financial. We recognize that that's not a general fund um, item, but it's also good for us to just kind of know um, when and if there are major um, changes uh, specific to your bonds. Right. And if there's any like key revenue sources that aren't listed here, we have left a few blanks um to in input any other categories that you feel are, are will be major and reoccurring each month so you can add a few areas to your templates um, again that's another value of not having it password protected we can insert more rows if we need to but we'll need to make sure our equations are still calculating uh, as they should um if we want to get into expenses we've also added quite a few more expense categories so we've broken out some of the payroll taxes from our total payroll line uh, we've looked a little bit more at any credit cards and ACH payments, as well as any purchase services. Uh, a lot of our districts will use purchase services for a large portion of their staff, so that will be a key line on uh, breaking out some of that from our payroll compared to that purchase services, uh, as well as we've added a few more lines on any healthcare and ORS uh, to go forward. And the SAN and TANs, so we've created matching lines for that as compared to the revenues going forward this year. So there are a few more categories as well as the same blank lines to add any other um, important lines. And one of the items I would add here, as you can see here, that line item for your TAN is estimated. Uh, we do recognize that um, you know, there's additional information that you're waiting uh, you know, specific to that. So we did use the term estimated um, as it relates to the TAN there. I think that covers most of the cash flow. So that is our projection tab where we'll update that one again twice a year. It does state that in the instructions. So once we submit it for the first time here um, in this next month and then a December update. So you don't need to update your cash flow each or your projections each month. Uh, and our actual tab will really calculate the variance from those projections. So the, the actual tab will be exactly the same format um, is just the actual tabs will calculate our variances to to show how close we are to the projections and if there's any concerns. So the cash flow is definitely one of our our, our 
important documents, so it's definitely one thing we monitor closely. Um, we don't really like any surprises that a district can't make payroll, so we, if we see any shortages in the future or projections, uh, that is a, a major concern for us, so we're really trying to keep an eye on that, and, and please let us know if there's any, any concerns on cash, and it's definitely a topic we talk about in our calls uh, going forward. So anything else on cash, Jessica? No, I think that's it. All right, so for those of you that may have the administrative review, as Sam mentioned earlier on, uh, there is a quarterly report that uh, we do obtain. Um, for the administrative review, there's some items that we think just for consistency, things that we would like to see. Um, also, um, this also provides a framework um, for that quarterly report. Uh, so some of the things we look for is a current fiscal year cash flow analysis, similar to what we've just displayed. We also are interested in seeing a five-year budget forecast. Um, I think that that is uh, pretty typical. Um, I would say when you are looking at um, identifying ways at which you're going to mitigate fiscal stress. Budget policies, I think this is a very important piece. Um, I think um, most districts have that process at which they are doing budget amendments um, regularly. Um, our intent is to better understand what your budget policies are. Do you actually have a fund balance policy? All of that information helps us um, as we navigate your district's health. Um, we also are looking at a 10-year enrollment analysis, a 10-year staffing analysis according to the FID, and then also the 10-year general fund balance analysis. Um, each, three, each of those documents for those analysis, you actually can contact the department. We do have some very cool tools and resources that have been developed over the years that your district has access to. And I don't know, Sam, if, if you have something open already on your screen, but I thought it'd be, um, this is another tool um, that we have. So if you are interested in actually obtaining this for your district, even if you aren't in that administrative review, we would be um, you know, very happy to produce that report. Um, let's see, I think Sam's gonna show one. Because in short, um, this analysis, we track all of the data that goes into the FID and we've developed a template at which we're able to pull all of this data, um, again, directly from the FID and it calculates exactly um, you know, what your percents are, uh, again, according to the FID, and it's like the, just a nice tool uh, that we look at. So you can see here is the fall count of your FTE. We recognize that there's the spring count, but we do focus on that 90% that's happening in the fall. We actually also calculate the three-year average, which I think is something that we utilize quite frequently, um, in part because it allows us to see things in chunks, um, you know, and, and keeping things relevant. And that three year actually aligns with statute as well. We're able to look at your revenues, your expenditures, your fund balance, um, your ratios of revenues to pupil, um, you know, in, in graduation rates, dropout rates. We pull this information straight from the FIDS. So if you are interested in seeing this information or utilizing this information for the purposes of your budget reports or anything that you're working on, um, please don't hesitate to reach out and give us a call. And, and maybe what we'll do, Sam, um, you know, maybe at the closeout of this year, maybe we'll just send them out to everyone because it's a great tool. Um, again, back to the administrative review and that quarterly report. Um, again, we're looking for those recommendations to eliminate the negative trends, and we want some specificity there. Strategies that you're going to um, use to eliminate those negative trends. And lastly, we want to know about the progress that has been made. So if we are relying upon that information from your ISD, those are key areas that we would like to see in that report. And we do have a template forthcoming specific to that. All right, next slide. And, and most of that, again, is, is laid out in statute. For the administrative review, there's like 12 specific items that need to be done for that administrative review. So that's where a lot of uh, the bullet points kind of were stemmed from. All right, so what we're going to do at this point, um, this is going to go over a lot of the errors that we have seen. Um, our intent here is to help you all understand the errors that we see regularly. Um, again, based off of these errors that we've seen, 
we've actually amended our template, um, you know, so that we can mitigate the risk of some of these. So um, that being said, um, Sam, I'll go ahead and hand it back over to you to go over some of the errors that we see frequently. Um, and then we'll also provide some tips and tricks how to correct and mitigate those errors. Yep. So, so mainly number one and two are pretty similar uh, for our top 10 errors. Um, we really want to make sure that each tab is filled out um, each month. So we want each category to be updated accordingly to the month uh, and, and all the data fields that apply to be filled in. Um, if you aren't sure where to put some of the data into the templates, we've tried to put a lot of the coding on there to help with that. But if you aren't sure, feel free to reach out and we can help either figure out which category it goes in or we can create a, a row on some of those those blank areas that we have. Um, so that's that's one of the big issues is just the tabs not being filled out uh, completely or just a missing column. If you amended a budget, it kind of ties to number four. Uh, not having that amended budget on the monthly report. Uh, we do kind of track the websites as well. Look for transparency pages. If the budgets are amended, uh, do we have that most recent budget showing on our reports? So that kind of ties in number four as well. Um, number three, modifications to the template. Um, that kind of ties to some of the calculations too. So we built in a lot of the calculations to be kind of a check for you and us to make sure the numbers are, are working as they should. Uh, please do not overwrite any of the equations unless we're updating equations to, to match uh, the data that we've input in there. But really, we don't want any modifications to the template, no removing as we talked about before. But again, if we do want to add to it or add assumptions, we're happy to work with you. Feel free to reach out to us and, and let us know what we can do to help add those to your templates. Um, late submissions, uh, so that's number five. Uh, we're, we're normally somewhat flexible on the deadlines. Uh, we'd like to get them on the 20th of each month, uh, but we're still open to, if, if you need an extension, please just let us know. Uh, especially this time of year, the fiscal year ends, things are a little crazy right now. So we've had a few districts reach out, hey, we don't wanna give you inaccurate numbers, we're still closing our books, can we submit a few days late? And, and that's normally fine, but please just let us know. Um, Brett, who's also on the call, and Ryan from our team, are, they're both on the call. They'll do a lot of the evaluations and collecting the reports. He does, does send out monthly reminders uh, to submit those reports. So we do, we do ask for those reports, uh, remind everyone that they are due on the 20th of each month. But late submissions is, is definitely one that we don't like to keep annoying people and chasing people down after the fact, but we're happy uh, to work with you proactively on that. Um, the next slide, so the starting fund balance on the template is one to be sure that matches your your records as well. Uh, it it kind of hides up there at the top sometimes, and if you do amend your budget, especially that first amendment, uh, your original budgets is usually that guess where it's not audited and it's we don't know what the audited number will be coming in at. Uh, be sure to update that audited number and your starting fund balance, so then the rest of the revenues and expenditures and formulas will really kind of tie out to the numbers that, that you have as well. Um, notes and variances, we've talked about quite a bit on the whole presentation. Um, if the numbers don't look right uh, or the percentages are really high or really low and there's no variance, that's definitely going to be a question from us or what's going on. Um, so it, it helps us a lot. Uh, if you do fill out these notes and variance columns to explain, uh, well, we we haven't done our federal draw this month. There's a big draw coming um, that will bring up our federal revenue. Uh, just any explanations to why the numbers are high or low are definitely super helpful. Um, cash flow projections. Uh, we really want the cash flow projections uh, out for for the entire fiscal year and kind of tracking that. Um, in December, we'll have you update it for the kind of the year going out from there too. So we really kind of want a, a longer term cash flow projection uh, to, to help us alleviate any concerns that there will be any cash problems uh, going forward. So that's just kind of one of the ones that some districts, uh, we've asked them to extend their cash flow projections if they haven't been projected out too far. Um, manual calculations that kind of tied into the other ones of incorrect data. Um, some districts have typed over the equations that are adding up or sums and it's kind of concerning why the numbers don't align or why the numbers don't add up so we really want to make sure that our calculations are are really complete and have the full picture of all the numbers that are above uh, as for the inner fund transfers so that's kind of the new one this year uh, that's really one we're going to want to be watching to track where the funds are coming and going from uh, so please be sure to use that kind of newer section and tracking our our fund transfers in and out so we can really understand where the money is going or or coming 
to the general fund. So just could you have anything you want to add? No, nope, I think that covers it. So now we are at a point um, in the on the agenda at which we will open it up for questions. Um, uh, so I will open it up for any questions that you all may have, and you can do so by either raising your hand or uh, you can uh, put a note inside of the box there. So we got one in the chat already. It's if you get out of deficit and have a positive fund balance, do you have to continue doing the EDEP reports? So we do have a few districts with that right now. So there are several districts that just passed their final budgets showing a very large positive fund balance. Um, the EDEP reports will end when those numbers are audited. So once we get your audited financial statements, uh, then we will see that the numbers are positive. Uh, and that will remove you from the EDEP bucket. But then again, you also, we monitor the proactive, the early warning side of it. So you'll still be subject to all of the early warning, uh, all of our models. So we'll still input all of your data as we do every district in the state to look for any red flags in those trends. So again, a lot of that work is trend work. So after you're out of deficit, we monitor for the early warning, our metrics, our projection models, and monitoring your budgets for any, any concerns with the trends. Um, Where did we find the template? Sam is the next one. Yep, so we, we just got done polishing this one right up, so we'll get it posted on our website and we'll be sure to send it out to everyone. So we will send out the templates uh, to everyone. As I think the deadline is actually today for the districts that we recently declared on for administrative review or the periodic reporting. So now that that deadline is up, we'll be sending out these templates um, to all of the new districts as well as our 2021 22 templates for all of our districts that have been under our oversight and we can definitely send a copy of the presentation uh to this whole group so and we will also have the recording uh will also be on the website as well and i um i think it is important um also to note take a look at our website we have made some changes to the website recently that I think would be helpful. Uh, we're trying to make it a little bit more accessible. Um, so we have made some changes there and we'll ensure that that information with the new template will be on our website. But yes, we will be sending this out to everyone. And maybe what we're going to look to do, as I mentioned, um, send out that template to everyone. Um, any other questions? Uh, yes, I see here for the new yep. district, the template will be due. Uh, yep, August 20th. That is correct. Yep, so that so your August 20th report will be through the end of July. So we're always at 20 day delay to give you time to close the books and whatnot. So uh, through July 31st will be due on August 20th. Correct. And I guess just another thing to note, a lot of our communication will be through this OS. FRA email. So that that email will be an important one. Uh, we'll send a lot of emails from that, and that's where you'll be sending your monthly reports as well. Uh, that's kind of our shared email box. So we all get that one and we'll all be working through that email box. Yeah, and it is important to utilize that email box um, in part because that's how we record and or track. Um, so I know some districts may um, CC myself and that's perfectly fine. But we want to make sure that any email will be sent to that general mailbox because it does allow for us to not only track it, but also ensure that um, we have received it and different people can review um, the information that is submitted. There was definitely a little typo. I just flipped the letters. It's Office of School <laughs> Review and Fiscal Accountability. So. But if, if we're working with you, you probably received emails from this email box already, but that is definitely where we'll be. Most of our communication will be through. Any other questions? All right, well, we want to thank everyone again for taking the time out to attend this webinar. We do anticipate that we'll be doing additional webinars, as I mentioned before, specific to the um, ESSER or just technical support, things that we can do to make sure you're getting the information you need. Um, we're looking at doing a webinar on best practices as it relates to ESSER. Uh, we're hoping to also identify and do some on grant management. Uh, but if you do have some ideas that you have on information that you'd like to see us present on, 
Um, we are definitely interested in that. We'll be partnering uh, with several departments within the state uh, to address any questions. So if you do have ideas, feel free to reach out. Um, you're more than welcome to invite your board presidents. I think sometimes it is important that board presidents are kind of aware of some of this, um, especially as it relates to some of the reporting, um, but feel free to extend that invitation out if needed. Uh, and that being said, uh, th Sam, thank you. And everyone else, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you. Did you have a question, Barb? I see you type Jessica. And we got you on mute right now. Can you unmute yourself? Sorry about that. Number one, um, I accidentally put this in on the wrong time in my calendar, so I missed some of it. So I'll look for the video on your webpage.